Hello out there everybody, Manny here at Area 503, and I hope you all have been well since our last video. Today I've got some pretty cool UFO sightings to share with you folks. But first, I just wanted to take a minute to announce that we have a winner in the UFO challenge that I proposed to you folks back in episode 96. That seems to be shifting or bending the light around it somehow. Look at the way that it appears to pixelate. And so I want to post a friendly challenge to you all. I challenge you to go out on the internet and find a piece of footage that I can verify that looks like this one, where it pixelates and ripples. If any one of you can find a piece of similar footage and post it in the comments section below, I'll pin your comment and feature you in a follow-up video. So the challenge has been made and the gauntlet thrown, and if you want a chance to be in an Area 503 video, get out there and start looking for UFO videos that look like this one. And so I challenged you all to go find some similar footage, and boy, y'all didn't let me down. A whole bunch of you commented. Let's take a look at a few of those comments. Rebecca Turner wrote, Good video, Manny. That long one with the lights is cool. I think it's a UFO. The blue spinning thing? I have seen so many of them in the past few years. Some are white, some multicolored, or solid, like red or blue. I'm not sure about the weird lines like this one, but I'll look and send it to you if I run across any. Well, thank you, Rebecca, for joining in the conversation and for trying to help us figure this out. Next, the Yurgis Rude said that the blue UFO, number three, looked to me like someone recorded a star and was shaking like crazy. You might be onto something there. It certainly does look like a blue star out of focus. Next, John Raider Snake wrote, The pixelated video UFO. I'm very skeptical of those as there is a huge host of things that can make an image like that. In reality, that's just a light source or a reflection, and when zoomed in, it looks like a ball of energy. That's a fantastic point, Snake, and I think it's right along the same lines as Jurgis Rude was saying. And then lastly, Tay Tay joined the conversation, writing, I found this P900 zoom in on a blue star. It's kind of similar depending on how far away it was shot. I'd guess it's a star. Oh, and Tay Tay gave us a link. Let's go take a peek. But first, I'd just like to take a moment to say thank you to Senor Il S for giving me permission to use this footage where they filmed the blue star with the Nikon P900. Hmm, that does look awfully similar to the blue UFO filmed in episode 96. Computer, compare the UFO footage in episode 96 alongside the reference footage shot with the P900. Wow, like I said earlier, those do look awfully similar, but we don't see the pixelization that we saw in the episode 96 UFO. About that, let me read to you what I posted in response to Tay Tay. Nice one, Tay Tay. That looks very similar, but it does not have the pixelization that the other one has. I suspect this is because the footage you found was shot with the Nikon P900, which is one of the best commercial cameras you can buy for zoom footage. However, the footage in my video was shot with a cell phone and had a low video bitrate, so maybe they are the same thing, and the pixelization was due to the lower quality camera and the low bitrate. Good job finding this, we may have a winner. <laughs> well, the more I looked at these two videos side by side, the more convinced I was that Tay Tay's theory was correct and that these are the same object, most likely a blue star, but one of the pieces of footage was filmed with a cell phone, and the other was filmed with a top-of-the-line camera. So I feel pretty confident saying this here. I'd like to announce the winner of the episode 96 UFO challenge, Tay Tay! <laughs> so congratulations to Tay Tay, and true to my word, I pinned your comment in episode 96 and featured you in this video. And I just want to say thank you to all of you who participated for helping us all get a little bit better at identifying UFOs. And with that, we will move along to our first sighting, which took place over Sweden. A witness was dropping their daughter off at the ferry station and snapped a few photos of the moon. Later, while reviewing the photos, they noticed these strange lights in the sky. 
Hmm, well that's not good. And I say not good because I was already getting the impression that this might be a lens flare or a reflection of some kind from the bank of lights down on the deck of the boat. Because that is always a huge red flag to me that a UFO might be a reflection when the witnesses didn't see the UFO with the naked eye. Because reflections like this won't be seen with the naked eye, but they will show up in the camera footage. In fact, just at a glance, it looks like it might be these lights down here. Computer, I sight the bank of lights on the deck of the ferry, then attempt to resize and place them over the UFO. Well, that's not a precise match, computer, but it's still not too bad. <laughs> but I still think that this bank of lights might be the cause of this UFO sighting. But again, the main reason I feel that way is because the witness stated that they did not see the UFO with their naked eye, but only noticed it later while reviewing the photographs. When you add up all this circumstantial evidence, it's enough for me to say that I believe that this is a reflection of light, but I wanted to show it to you guys and get your opinions on it. What do you think it is? So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below and- Excuse me. And Excuse me. And we'll move. Excuse me. I would like to tell you what I think. Oh, snap. It's Tommy the Troll. Okay, Tommy. Let's hear what you gotta say. Okay, Manny. I just felt the need to tell you how big of an idiot you are. But first, I have to impress everyone with my Stubbly theme song. <laughs> I mean, my credentials. Look out, folks, here comes Tommy the Troll. He's a know-it-all about UFOs. He's got shit brown skin and a cold dead stare. He can't identify anything in the air. He doesn't care if he's wrong or right. He's gonna scream his points all day and night. Balloon, balloon, CGI. Another hoaxer, I hope they die. I'll chew them up and I'll spit them out. But all I'm really doing is writing on their cloud. Let's flare, let's flare, satellite. I'm gonna debunk hoaxers till the day I die. I was there, Roswell was just a balloon. People who say up twice is just a buffoon. I was even there for the Phoenix Lights. It was a bunch of helicopters giving people the rights. I've been busting fingers for millions of years. When hoaxers hear my name, it brings them to tears. But I'm too lazy to find UFOs. So I debunk other work on my live stream shows. Super chat, super chat, super chat. Gonna ride this way till I get big and fat. You better not post any UFOs. Cause look out, bitch, here comes Tommy the Troll. I'm Tommy the Troll. I troll them so that you don't have to. Wow, Tommy, that's a pretty cool intro. But what are you doing here? What am I doing here? I just felt the need to inform you that you are an idiot. Huh? What do you mean, Tommy? I was just trying to share this UFO sighting with my friends here. UFO sighting? More like a hoax UFO, you faker! Jeez, Tommy, there's no reason to be so hostile. But a hoax? Really? What are you going on about? I said that I thought that the sighting was caused by a lens flare due to the lights on the deck of the boat. Where's the hoax in that? You are just... you're just... You're just stupid, Manny. That hoax UFO in the image is clearly a computer-generated image. CGI, 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 CGI. Why would you say that, Tommy? There is no evidence of image tampering or CGI in the metadata information stored in the image. I checked, did you? Nope, it's just the first thing that I always say when there is clear footage of a UFO. That single bullshit statement stops over 50% of legitimate UFO sightings dead in their tracks. <laughs> so I had to try. <laughs> well, in that case then, this hoax UFO is obviously a group of helicopters flying in formation. Yeah, I don't think that's the case, Tommy, because otherwise the witness would have seen and heard them, don't you think? Witnesses lie just like you lie, Manny, you faker. What are you even talking about, Tommy? There is no evidence to show that the witness was lying here, and none that I did either. And that is no group of helicopters, my friend. <laughs> Manny, 
You hoaxer, you fraud. I posted your UFO photo to 100 forums and subreddits, so I get to take the credit for debunking you. I had the help of thousands of people who looked at your hoax UFO and determined that this bogus UFO sighting was a lens flare created by these lights. <laughs> I have completely debunked you, Manny, proving that I am the smartest troll, <laughs> I mean debunker, on the internet. My name will live on an internet legend for all time. I am immortal. <laughs> You suck, hoaxer! Wow, Tommy, I forgot about you, dude. I was out looking for more sightings and working on another video. What are you going on about now? Oh, that bank of lights down there. You know, Tommy, I had considered that possibly the UFO was caused by those lights, but I wasn't sure. And besides, maybe I wanted to leave the sighting open and unsolved so that the viewers could discover it for themselves. I mean, there are many reasons that I could have misidentified this sighting. Being human is just one of them. I knew that you're not even an alien, you hoaxer. <laughs> and I bet you don't even have a 10 trillion cubic quantum computer either, faker. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, Tommy, I'm starting to get the impression that you are not a debunker at all, that you're just a troll hiding behind debunking. You finally said something that I can agree with, Manny, but the term trolling has such a negative association that I like to call it debunking to make it more socially acceptable. Uh, come on, Tommy. Just admit it. You're doing it just to be a jerk, right? <laughs> that is true, Manny. And I'm only so hostile because I lack the charisma and wit of a true debunker like Captain Disillusion on YouTube. He's got some pretty cool makeup, by the way. And I simply don't have the patience or wisdom of the guy like UFO interests on Twitter either. <laughs> so the only trick I have is to be a blowhard asshole who shouts my opinion repeatedly while attacking or ignoring everyone else's opinions. <laughs> well, Tommy, I do think that you could learn a thing or two about debunking in a civil manner from Captain Disillusion or UFO interest. Those two do it without making it personal. But trolls are not actually debunkers, are they? I mean, some trolls only comment on videos or tweets in the most aggressive and abusive way possible. But there's another special kind of troll out there. These trolls start their own channels, but you notice they don't actually go out and look for UFO footage to analyze for themselves. They just wait around for an active channel to post videos and then sit around on their live streams hoping to get paid with super chats, <clears throat> debunking others' work. It all comes down to just being lazy, and they don't want to do any real work for themselves. <laughs> Go find your own footage, you bums. <laughs> but hey, like I always say, everyone is entitled to their own opinion. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep doing me over here, and you go ahead and do you way over there. Hey, Tommy, I'm going to let you go so I can get back to my video. Thanks for stopping by and joining the conversation. You suck, Manny. You're a fraud. You hoax UFO sightings. I'm gonna destroy you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Guys, I got a feeling that we haven't seen the last of Tommy the Troll. <laughs> but now that we know what Tommy thinks, let me know what you guys think about the UFO sighted over Sweden in the comment section down below, and we'll move along to our next sighting, which took place over northern Atlanta, Georgia. The witness wrote the following statement. After taking out the trash late Tuesday, I observed what I thought was a bright star in the sky, and then it began to move in a floating leaf-like pattern. Intrigued, I watched it briefly and then went inside to get my phone to film it. I did this for a few minutes and realized there was another object horizontal in the sky to the first. It stayed mostly hidden, but I did capture it on video. These two videos were taken with my phone zoomed in at 100%. The first UFO seemed a little bit brighter and larger than the second. Sorry about the darkness of the video, I did my best. <laughs> no apologies necessary, thank you for doing your best. And since you took the time to notice this object, and to film it, and to ask for help identifying it, I figured the least we could do was take a quick look. <laughs> that being said, we really don't have a lot to go on here. It's really too dark out to see much, and the poor bitrate of the video means that this could be just about anything. 
So, pure speculation here based only upon the footage and the witness statement that the UFO was moving in a floating leaf-like pattern and then it moved off into the clouds. That would make me guess that this may have been a pair of helicopters of some kind, either military or civilian. But I'm just guessing. I mean, it could have been some kind of off-world craft, just as likely. You just can't tell, and in the absence of proof, anything's possible, I suppose. <laughs> but what do you guys think it is? A couple of helicopters, a couple of UFOs, or a couple of I don't knows? <laughs> Let me know in the comment section below, and we'll move along to our next sighting, which took place over Charlottesville, Virginia. Take a look at this footage. Hmm, right away I see what appears to be a red flash that could be an airplane marker light. And I bet you guys saw it too, so you're probably wondering why is Manny showing us footage of an airplane? But I want to read to you the witness statement. I was walking my dog in the park, and I noticed my dog look up towards me, and for some reason this caused me to also look up, where I noticed the bright round object in the video that I captured. I heard absolutely nothing at all. This area does see its fair share of military helicopters, Osprey, Coast Guard aircraft, and E-2 Greyhounds. My father flew C-130s, and I've also seen them here as well. And all of those aircraft are loud. Sound here travels really far, especially at night, which is what drew my attention to this UFO, because I could detect no sound from it. I checked the Flight Radar 24 app to see if this was a commercial plane, and there were no aircraft visible. I also checked for satellites when I got home, and I didn't see any with the western trajectory. Not to say that they don't exist. But this thing wasn't moving satellite fast. It was moving more like a commercial airliner, but clearly it was not. And one final note. My eye did not detect the flashing that you can see in the video. It was definitely not flashing to the naked eye, as it is in the footage. Well now, isn't that interesting? The witness said that the UFO was silent, and that the dog noticed it first and then looked up, drawing his attention to it. So the witness checked Flight Radar 24 to confirm that this was not a publicly known aircraft. The ADS-B systems showed nothing in the area, so if this was an aircraft, it was flying without a transponder and either military, or perhaps diplomatic, or maybe even top secret. We really have no way of knowing which. The witness also checked for possible satellites, they said, ruling those out as well. Well, awesome work. That makes my job easy. <laughs> I'd also like to point out one more thing about this sighting. The witness said that they were used to seeing all sorts of other military aircraft in the area, and they were familiar with aircraft in general, having a father who was a pilot. What's my point? Well, in my opinion, the witness statement in this case should carry significant value. This is someone who sees airplanes all the time, and this sighting was something special. It was different, and it stood out enough to get the witness to stop, check Flight Radar 24, and then film the UFO. So whatever this thing is that was filmed, there's no doubt in my mind that it's something significant. It's either a military, or a diplomatic, or a test plane without a transponder, or it's a genuine UFO. I'm more inclined to think that it is a military plane, just due to the proximity of the sighting near to an area where military aircraft were seen regularly. But even if this is a military craft, that doesn't explain why it's silent. Is it a massive craft like a refueling jet that's just a far ways away so you can't hear it? I really don't know, but it truly is a compelling case that all hinges on the witness statement. So I wanted to show it to you guys and get your opinions on it. So let me know what you think in the comment section below, and we will move along to our next sighting, which took place over sunny Las Vegas, Nevada, my home away from home. <laughs> this one was uploaded to YouTube by a guy named Franklin, who was very courteous and allowed me to use his footage and to answer a few questions for me. So let's take a look. UFO. It's fairly easy to see why this footage caught my eye. You can see a strange, 
U-shaped or oblong object that seems to be holding its position and moving rapidly across the sky in a straight heading. I can definitely understand why Franklin noticed this and decided to record it. I think I would have too. <laughs> so like I said earlier, this thing looked almost U-shaped to me, so I asked Franklin about that, and he told me that it actually wasn't U-shaped at all. He said he looked at it through a 9 power scope and that it had four separate legs and that they were not perfectly aligned or straight. And he drew this drawing to give me a better visualization of it. Franklin said that the legs seemed to have a little bit of movement to them and that all of these details were revealed through the 9 power scope. But when you viewed the UFO from a distance, the legs appeared to blend together, almost like they were two pieces sticking out of the UFO. And this made me wonder, I know that it can get extremely windy in Las Vegas at times, and there are also a ton of swimming pools in the city. So I wonder if this might be some kind of an inflatable pool toy that got picked up by the wind and is flying by. Computer. Isolate the shape of the UFO in the footage, and compensate for the details accounted for in Franklin's statement. Then search the internet for inflatable pool toys that match the description. Thank you, computer. Of these two, I like the Rhino the best. <laughs> it's entirely possible that something similar to this could have gotten tossed into the air by a gust of wind and taken flight. If it were heavy enough, it would seem to just glide like this UFO does, because it would have enough weight behind it to resist getting knocked around by the wind while still being light enough to take flight. I asked Franklin about the pool toy theory, and he said that that really made him think, because that could possibly be it. And that's about the only explanation that I can come up with as far as something that was made on this earth. What do you guys think? Is that a UFO or a pool toy? Let Franklin and I know in the comment section below. Hey, that rhymes. <laughs> for now, let's go ahead and move along to our next sighting, which took place over the southern United States. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a UFO. Nope. <laughs> it's Elon and the gang over at SpaceX causing quite the stir over the southern states when they deployed a whole host of Starlink satellites. Hundreds of people all the way from Arkansas clear to Texas flooded social media with photographs and video of the sighting. Some people were extremely alarmed. What the fuck is that? Other people were mildly curious. Where'd it go? And yet other people knew exactly what it was. <laughs> but until the Starlink program is completed, we're going to keep getting reports like these every time they send up another batch of satellites. So dig in, get used to it, and next time we'll know them when we see them. <laughs> well guys, for now, that's all I've got for UFO sightings. Let me know what you think about all of these sightings down in the comments section below. I'd love to get your opinions, and maybe if we work together, we can figure out what these things are. At least, that's my hopes. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm out of here. I'll catch y'all later. As always, this has been Manny at Area 503. And I wish you all the best until we meet again. And I am out of here to continue my search for universal truth. <laughs>